Hey, yo, what is going on, you rigid Rillaboom? So we've got some new card leaks to take a look at, go over, and talk about. Now, these cards are... I have no idea when they're coming out, to be honest. i got no no clue. Uh, but there's some cool ones here. Definitely want to talk about them. There's a big one coming up um, a little bit later on towards the end. Actually, I don't know how far down it is. It's probably at the end, though, because it is a trainer card. But let's go. Let's just get into it. Let's start with the first one here, which is the Cricketune. And in general, it's going to be some big buffs to Grass-type and fighting type specifically more so a little bit more so to grass type i think than fighting um but yeah quick here stage one pokemon overflowing melody the hp of each grass pokemon excluding any quick is increased by 40 you can't use more than one overflowing melody ability at a time so this is a 40 hp is nothing to to scoff at especially you can potentially combo that with like a cape of toughness um or like a big charm you know depending on what type of pokemon it is or something like um I forget what the, the card is called, but it reduces 20 damage when you take a hit from a Pokemon. Um, and you just, like, get really tanky, potentially. So, 2-2 Krikatoon line in some kind of grass deck could definitely be a game changer, you know, going from, I don't know, just f plus, 40 HP, plus 40 HP. And, like, it's more so not just, like, plus 40 HP, but, like, potentially combo that with something like Big Charm getting plus 70 HP. That could kind of be the breaking point for a certain number in a format to just become, like and unstoppable basically like an hp that just can't be one hit ko'd or even really hard to two hit ko so there's a lot of range to be worked with here with this with this cartoon for sure so this one's pretty exciting to start off with actually to be honest because the stage one it's a solid ability on a stage one pokemon most solid abilities like this that we see um are usually on like stage two pokemon and are just basically useless and can't be utilized consistently in decks so uh really cool to see this on a stage one pokemon and i think there's actually a lot of uh, validity for this um if there's enough grass pokemon of course the support pokemon are only as good as the main show so if there's enough good grass attacking pokemon to combo with this then we could definitely see some play from the cricketune but yeah really good ability overall we get into the lilligant v uh more zero energy attack uh cards i love this i think the zero energy attacks should have never gone away when they initially went away a long time ago they're back now who knows how long they'll be staying for but uh yeah hisuian lilligan v uh, last time we had zero attack cost was the alolan so maybe they're only doing it with like but i guess like galarian pokemon never had zero attack cost anyways i think it's just like a cool thing to have in the game and i think it should kind of stay around and they shouldn't get rid of it hopefully they don't get rid of zero attack cost cards after these ones um you know rotate out or stop being pretty whatever hopefully it continues just for the rest of the pokemon tcgs in its entirety but for zero energy draw until you have six cards in your hand which is like not a huge effect to have access to but it's a it's just like one of those things where like it ups the consistency of any deck by a ton if any v pokemon just had this attack it would just be so nice because then you can like bench two or put two Lilligan V's in play. One's in your active, one's on your bench. Maybe you go second and then with the bench or you attach to the bench one. But with the active one, you just drop to six cards and completely change how you play out your turn. You could be more aggressive with your ultra balls and quick balls and discard stuff like draw supporters because, you know, at the end of the turn, you're drawing up to six cards in hand. So just a really powerful attack to have on your V Pokemon. Of course, the V star is going to be the main uh I mean, the V just is there to get to the V star, right? But it's great to have that attack on the V Pokemon. So we got the Lilligant V star here. For Grass Grass Calls, it does 130 damage, and then you may return an energy card attached to this Pokemon to your hand. If you do, you do 100 more damage. So you're doing 230 here with this uh, parallel spin. You get to 260 with a choice belt, and you can probably get some other stuff involved to get to damage a little bit higher. But the damage from this attack is not great, to be honest. 260 with the choice belt, not great. And it only has 268 HP as well. So you're only going to be potentially taking down other V-Star Pokemon. Uh, but you really can't touch that uh, that 300 HP of the V-Maxes. So I'm not really sold on this thing being a main attacker in a deck. Maybe. Um, what I'm a little bit more hype on with this card is actually its V-Star power. Uh, the Star Perfume. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for up to five in any combination of grass Pokemon and grass energy cards, reveal them and put them, uh, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. You can't use more than one V star power in a game. Um, so this would allow you to like set up all of your other grass Pokemon and get grass energy in your hand, which combos with the grass uh, trainer card that we talking about a little bit later on. So this V star power, I think is super good. The attack is still solid. So this could be a secondary attacker in the deck but i don't actually know what would even be a primary attacker so maybe this would be your primary attacker and you could have like a shaman v as a backup and it only does have 260 hp like i mentioned but then i did just talk about cricketune earlier on looking at 300 hp you get a big charm on there looking at 330 so maybe 
uh Lilligant V-Star with the Krikatoon is a deck in itself. Maybe that is just kind of a deck in itself. Because the V-Star power is super strong at getting you set up and getting everything kind of going and uh cooking. Um next we're gonna take a look at the Machamp V. There are, like I said, there's a ton of grass stuff in this in these leaked cards, but there's also some fighting stuff as well. Machamp V, Revenge Buster, 50 damage. If your bench book won't have any damage counters on it, so it's 50 more damage. And then fighting fighting colors for 140, uh 220 HP. Uh we got the Cleaver V. 40 damage for a fighting and then battle axe slash 150 discard one energy card from this pokemon discard an energy then discard an energy card from your opponent's active pokemon uh for fighting fighting colors for 150 the attacks on that are not great i think we are getting a uh cleaver v max i'm pretty sure um Maybe we've already had that leak, to be honest. All right, here we go. Um, this is the this is the card. This is the big card here, the big grass card here. Uh, draw two cards, then attach up to two grass energy cards from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. Basically, very similar to Welder. Um, so the couple things that are different, you draw two cards instead of three. It has to go to a benched Pokemon, um, but you draw the cards before you attach the energy. Uh, so that does mean that you can draw into the grass energy off the two cards and then put those energy in play. I'm sure we've all had a bunch of times where we have had Welder with no energy in the past or where we would well or where we only had Welder for one as well. But with with uh, Gardenia's Vitality, uh you can you can, you know, play guard you can have one grass energy in your hand, play Gardenia, draw into another grass energy, then have two to attach through the uh, effect of the support and like i said this does combo really really well with Lilligan's uh v star ability because you can use the ability to go get the grass energy out of the deck as well as some of the pokemon you want to set up into play and then um you know you know kind of get the full setup going from there so a lot of uh combination power with the uh Lilligant, but um i think the supporter is going to be good no matter what Lilligant might be good i think the supporter will definitely see play at some point Another thing to mention about this supporter, just like Welder, it does not have to go to a grass Pokemon. It can go to any Pokemon. You could use this on literally any Pokemon in the game, or you could attach the energy. You could just play this in a deck and play zero grass energy, to be honest, and just draw two cards and then never attach your grass energy. But you would be, you would fake your opponent out and make them think that you do play basic grass energy. Probably not worth the trade-off of only drawing two cards and not accelerating any energy, but it is something you could do. Uh, but yeah, this will definitely see play, whether it's with grass Pokemon or not. I do not see this this card seeing zero play throughout its uh throughout its existence. So definitely look out this card to be played for sure. Uh tons of poten combo potential there. Uh now we get it to the fighting support supporter. Fighting supporter here. Grant, once during your turn, uh your fighting Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. But there's more. Um, during this turn, if you discard two cards from your hand, I think it's, yeah, during this turn, if you discard two cards from your hand, this is not an effect of the supporter, but an effect on the supporter. If you discard two cards from your hand, excluding any grant, you may take this grant from your discard pile or reveal it and put it into your hand. This effect doesn't count, uh... Uh, does, doesn't count as a, your supporter played for turn. So by using this effect of the card to just put it from the discard pile to your hand by discarding two cards, that's not you playing your supporter for the turn. You can then play it if you want or play any other supporter you'd want. Um, but I don't know why you would put this from your discard pile into your hand to discard two cards to then not play it. Unless you're just trying to thin out your hand, which would actually make sense. So you could do it for that, I guess. But super cool effect on a supporter card. Really, really cool effect. Uh, I'm a huge fan of just this effect in general. Whether this card sees play or not, who knows? That kind of relies on fi fighting Pokemon being good. One cool combo you could do with this card is you could play it in Mew VMAX, actually, and you could use it at times where your hand is kind of clogged down with just dead cards. So you could, like, use Grant to discard two cards from your hand and put the Grant in your hand. And then you, if you don't need to play Boss or Elsa Sparkle for turn, you could just play the Grant back down, and now you've effectively thinned two cards out of your hand. If you don't play the Grant back down, you've effectively thinned one card out of your hand, but sometimes that's all you need to draw those extra cards off the Genesect to keep things moving. And even at that point, you could then Quick Ball or Ultra Ball the Grant away and free up more space in your hand still. So some potential there in Mew VMAX, I think. Maybe I'm just memeing with that, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I think it's possible that it could be good. Um, but... Uh, if fighting Pokemon are good, you'll definitely see that in fighting Pokemon decks. Um, I guess Wormadam is one that, that could, this could actually be really, really good in because you would discard two cards from your hand, which could be Pokemon cards, which buffs Wormadam's damage. Then you play this, which buffs the fighting Wormadam's damage by plus 30, and your Wormadam, I mean, it's doing damage. Um, up next, we got the Machamp VMAX, which is pretty underwhelming overall, to be honest. It is a VMAX Pokemon, which we're kind of all sick and tired of VMAXs. 330 HP, so the HP is pretty high up there. 
Uh, it's got the Revenge Buster, 80 plus 140 if there's any Pokemon on your bench with damage counters for a Fighting Anacola. So solid attack there. The 220, it hits that number to KOV Pokemon uh, on turn two, Fighting Anacola uh, for 220 damage. That's the number you're looking for, one hit KOV Pokemon. Uh, and then we got that Max Charge for 240. This is a Pokemon can't use Max Charge during your next turn for Fighting Fighting Anacola. So 240... You combo that with the Grant. You combo that with a Choice Belt. You're looking at 300 damage. You're still short from KOing VMAXs. It is weak to Psychic. And, of course, Mew VMAX has that um, Fighting Resistance. So you're not even getting close to KOing Mew VMAX. So if Mew VMAX is still prevalent, this card does not seem great. But if the format has kind of evolved by the time these cards come out, like I said at the beginning of the video, I got no clue when these things are coming out. But there's a lot of cool cards that I want to talk about. So I got no clue what the format's going to look like when this Machamp comes through with its Revenge Buster and its Max Charge. So... We'll see. It could be, could be a good time for Machamp, you know? I mean, if Mew's not the number one deck, maybe Arceus is. And Arceus is weak to fighting, even if they have Dunsparce. I mean, you're still doing a ton of damage with this Max Charge. So, some potential here for the Max, uh, for the, the Machamp, potentially, when it does come out. Uh, but that's what we don't know, is when is it coming out. Uh, Cleaver V-Star. Okay, here, the V-Star is literally in this in this uh, set right here. So, we got the Break Axe 120. This attack also does 60 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon V. So, not bad for a fighting and a colorless but it's really not that great. If you put a choice belt on there, you're looking at 150 to V maxes and V star Pokemon still only 60 to the bench Pokemon. And then the, the V star power just feels kind of weird. It feels kind of off on this Pokemon. Um, rampaging star for a fighting. This attack does 30 damage for each, um, Pokemon in your discard pile. You can't use more than one V star power in a game. So you're playing a V-Star deck, and you're doing 30 damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile. It just feels a little bit off. What kind of uh, deck are you running this in at that point? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just not sure how this card fits in a deck that also has enough Pokemon in the discard pile to get value out of Rampaging Star. Maybe? But it just feels so off. The V-Star power feels so off. Uh, and it feels like if you're doing this, you're in like a one prize deck. And then do you really want to be putting down a V and a V star Pokemon in your one prize deck? So now your opponent can draw two prize cards or something. I don't know. That feels like it just feels weird. This card just feels weird to me. The first attack doesn't feel good enough for it to be like its own deck. And then the V star power wouldn't combo with the first attack if it was its own deck. Because if v, if Cleaver V star was its own deck, you wouldn't be having a ton of Pokemon in the deck anyways. Because you'd be like a, you know, a 4-4 V star deck, right? So it feels weird. Will it be good? Who knows? I'm guessing maybe not, but maybe some kind of fighting box type deck with Cleaver V-Star. You got the Break Axe as like an attack to use as an early game attack, and then you have some other fighting Pokemon for other options. I don't think you're trying to combo like Machamp with your Cleaver, but maybe you are. You know what, to be honest, maybe you are. Maybe we're putting both of them together. You can set up the, the 60 damage on one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with the Break Axe, and then the, the Max Charge comes through and gets, uh, a, you know, the effective one-hit KO. So who knows? Who knows? But Gardenia's Vitality, Broken Card, grant a super cool card that i hope sees play at some point i'd be very sad if this card does not see play at some point just such a cool effect on the supporter card here um such a such a cool effect something we've never seen before so really cool effect i'd be very sad if grant never sees play uh in a competitive setting uh will the lily be good the v-star power is really good at setting up your board but besides that the attack is a little bit lackluster but maybe just like a straight up lily deck could be good you got the cricketune that you could get in there and you could get a lot of hp and you know make it hard to get one at ko and that's all the cards we're going to be talking about today i hope you guys enjoyed the video and my insight on some of the new cards coming out i'm excited for them as always always excited for new cards these ones we might not be getting for a little bit for a little while but something to look forward to for sure if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to give it a like and hit the subscribe button and then be sure to hit the bell if you're enjoying the videos oh wait, i already said that anyways guys have a good day i'll see you tomorrow peace